Many musicians over recent years have become highly dependent on computer CPU, all the tracks and plugins, myself included. However, sometimes simplicity really is key. And going back to Sgt. Pepper, for example, of 1966, they had four track tape recorders to work with. I did where they had two so that they could do overdubs and transfers and all of that sort of thing. But the process was painstaking. There were many things, many restrictions in place that meant that they couldn't do absolutely everything, but they made full use of that gear. Hmm. Now, here I've got a Fostex VF80, which is an eight channel, an eight track hard disk recorder with effects built in. It's about 20 years old, give or take. So it's old technology. I showed it to a pupil yesterday who went, What's that? And I told him and he said, well, what use is that when you've got a computer with all these tracks on? And I thought, well, mm, this kind of prompted me to make this video because actually simplicity really is key sometimes and restrictions with recording equipment make you think a little bit differently and it can be a very refreshing approach. Let's have a look. I'm gonna conduct a short recording session using drums, bass and guitar and a bit of vocals. Now I've got six tracks, realistically, because seven and eight on this machine are really for mixing those six tracks onto in order to free up more tracks. So you are basically mixing as you go with not really much prospect of tweaking things afterwards. Hmm, that makes one think about the production. Now I've got a bass drum mic and an overhead mic. And on the other camera here, you can see the machine with these two tracks in record ready. I've got two flashing red lights ready to go. Two mics are plugged in and I've got a master control so I can hear what I'm doing. I don't need to do that at the moment because I'm playing the drums, but when I record other things like the vocals, I'll need my headphones. So I'm gonna press record and just see what happens. Here we go. So that's the drums recorded. Now I've got to put some bass guitar on this now. So I'm going to switch the, the drums off so that they are now in playback mode and I've got to plug in the bass. Now, very often on a multi-track like this, you'll have XLR and jack inputs, which means you can connect up guitars directly to this, which is useful. You don't need all these sort of audio interfaces because it's all kind of in the box. Now, I'll just plug the bass into this channel there and then just set that into record ready. Turn it up and then just press the record button here, which allows you to monitor what's going in. Just check on the meter. Yeah, that's okay. There's a, a good healthy level. It's not too loud. And I'm just gonna turn the drums up a bit because I have a feeling they'll be quite soft. Just have a little listen to them at the beginning, see what happens. There we go, well, I can hear that, that's all right. Okay, so I'm ready to record. I've got the drums higher so that I can play the bass to them. So uh, let's just push them up a little bit and here we go.
was a recording on there before. <laughs> okay, that's fine. So there we are, there's the bass recorded. Now you can do things, editing functions on this. I can stop that piano playing back. That was on tracks one and two. So I've recorded over those. So this is a bit like using an old tape machine where tracks are underneath each other, but you can't have two tracks at once like you can on Logic or Cubase or anything like that. Now I'm going to put some guitar on. So for this, I'm going to use my pod preamp. Now this is something that hasn't seen the light of day for a while. It's a guitar effects processor um, or guitar amp simulator as well. So it's useful to plug this straight into the box. You can get these. These do have guitar simulators built in, but actually I'm going to use the traditional, the one that I've got, because also I don't want to change it afterwards. I need to decide whether it's right or not, whether it's actually what I want. So I'm going to plug into the other one now because this is for even tracks. I'm on track four now. So I'm just going to switch that off. The bass is now playing back. Let's see what happens if I put this into record ready. Oh, that's going to be quite loud. Quite a lot of noise there. If you decide on reverb when you record, you're stuck with it. But sometimes it's quite nice. Reverb is, after all, an effect, but it you know, you have to decide whether you want it or not. Okay, well, I'm going to see what happens. No harm in trying. Here we go. my chord. Now, if I'm playing back on a workstation, I could go, oh, I'll just drop it in there. I'll put that right, the, the right chord in. But that means that you're not doing a complete performance. <laughs> it would be nice to have something that's just a bit more complete and just has that feeling and, and sort of sense of direction. So once again, I'm going to do that again because the timing wasn't quite there and also it's very difficult to tweak it afterwards so this really is making me really concentrate this is an important thing success at last. Now, I've got two more tracks. So I'm going to put a lead guitar down, but I might need to redo this because I haven't thought of the vocals yet. Now, the reason for that is that everything must play for that top line. It's really essential that that happens, that it's not just this sort of guitar fest. <laughs> Put a bit more drive on my uh, pod here. I could even change the amp simulation if I want. I quite like that fendery sound. Let's see what happens.
OK, so there was quite a lot of guitar stuff going on there. Do I really want that? Well, I don't know, do I? Hmm. Let's see what happens with the vocals. So now I'm ready to do the vocal part. I've got track six ready, six of six, on my machine. And I'm going to use this as well, the little pop shield, so I don't put lots of bass end into the microphone. I'll need my headphones so that I can monitor the band without it going into the mic. So here we are. Just uh, do a little check. One, two, two. There we go. There's something. One, pa, 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 pa. There you go. So the pop shield makes all the difference. Here we go. See what happens. When less is more to reach up on high, never back to front. There's a reason why. When all is used. There's no road ahead Tell yourself there's nothing more We're easily led No more excuses Abandon the thrills No more excuses Simple life Okay, so there's some vocals. Let's just go back to the beginning and have a little listen. Now, we haven't got a compressor on the input of this. It's just mic in straight away. Will the vocal sit above everything else without needing a compressor? Because I hope it doesn't, because that would be a little bit of a problem. Let's have a look. Okay. When less is more, up on high, never back to front, there's a reason why, when all is used, there's no road ahead, tell yourself there's nothing more, we're easily led. Yeah, that's working okay for me. Now, I might put a little bit of reverb on that vocals. Notice what I was doing there. I was riding the fader. Now, this is an alternative, a rather difficult alternative to compression, where if you know the song, you can actually preempt where the loud bits are going to come and just bring the fader down and back up again. It's kind of a bit like a compressor. So there we are. I've used all my six tracks. Now I could do a bounce onto seven and eight and then free up those tracks again. But of course, if I go wrong or if there's a problem, I can't really go back. I can on this machine, however, copy a complete session. So it's not the end of the world, but you can see how tricky it can be to make something work out of actually very little. Hmm.